Huffaday, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before this committee. In previous hearings, both myself and my predecessors as Governor of Guam have testified on a range of concerns for which Guam is seeking federal action. These include compact impact reimbursement, relief from regulations including the Jones Act, expansion of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act to include Guam, lifting of the Medicaid caps, climate change assistance, and inclusion in the SSI program. Foremost of these concerns is our request for $700 million in federal support for the construction of a new hospital. In my written testimony, I will go into further details about these issues and others. At the outset, I did want to speak to one aspect of my community's circumstances, which I believe not only places our concerns in context, but adds urgency to actually addressing them. I am referring to the growing milita military threat from China and the prospect of Guam being on the front lines should our shared fears of a military conflict be realized. Since its acquisition by the U.S. in 1898, Guam has always been a host for U.S. military bases. Of course, these bases have benefited our community and our economy, but have also brought with them risk, as was starkly demonstrated in 1941 when our island was invaded and suffered three years of brutal foreign occupation before our liberation by American forces. Although peace has been maintained in the post-war years, the risk to our community continued through the Cold War and beyond. Our people have long known that such risks are the price we pay for our freedom as Americans, and we take pride in the contribution of our island to the nation's security. It is broadly recognized that American bases on Guam will be a main target in any conflict with China. Although behind the fence line, the military bases which dot our island from north to south are very much part of our larger community, and any scenario involving the targeting of these bases will have serious implications for our civilian healthcare facilities, infrastructure, and resilience. In a visit to Guam last month, Marine Corps Commandant General David Berger remarked that it is not always fully appreciated how intertwined are both Guam's military bases and the civilian community. For example, these bases are served by the local Guam Power Authority and other civilian utilities. There is a naval hospital in Guam situated behind the fence line. But if that is damaged in a military conflict, the backup will naturally be the island's civilian hospital facilities, thus underscoring the need for federal support and investment for a new hospital. Indeed, but for the limitation of time, I could present further examples of how our communities wrote, network, ports of entry, and public service factor into the resilience and effectiveness of our island if it is called upon to play a frontline role in any conflict with China. I raise this prospect not to be an alarmist, but to emphasize that any federal support or investment of Guam's hospital facilities, infrastructure, and resilience also serves under the nation's security interests. In addition to a new hospital, one way in which our community can be supported is in addressing some of the adverse impacts of existing federal policy. This brings me to subject with which I am sure you are very familiar, namely the adverse impact of the Compact of Free Association on Guam's education, healthcare, and public safety services, as well as our infrastructure. Specifically, we seek full reimbursement for compact impact expenses, either by direct funding or offset against local match requirements in federal grant programs. Another area in which we seek relief is with respect to the restrictions on the importation of skilled labor, which is important to our economic recovery, but also to the planned military construction program. We appreciate the efforts of Congress in supporting our efforts to find a resolution to the skilled worker shortages, we are, which are largely mitigated by the H-2B program. To diversify and strengthen our economy, broader access to skilled labor is needed if our economic diversification strategies are to be realized. We propose two solutions. 
One, short-term relief, the Guam NDAA H-2B exemption expires in 2024, and estimates for ongoing military construction extend to 2029. Therefore, we ask that the exemption be extended to 2029. Long-term resolution, establish a Guam-only temporary need criteria criteria within the H-2B program, which would include other qualified need to be determined by the Governor of Guam. I appreciate your attention to my requests and look forward to working with the Committee on Solutions to these matters. Thank you and Sidzuus Masik.